Hey, it's me, your favorite artist you're obviously subscribed to, and welcome to the guideline tutorial. Now trust me when I say this, after watching this tutorial, not only will your art be so much more easier to draw, your art will also convey expression and emotion in a way it never had before. So please, I suggest watching this video to the very end. Before we get any further, I want to thank the sponsor of this tutorial. Thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring today's video. Best Buy, in my opinion, has some of the best prices and no other store can compare. At the top of their website, they always have weekly and daily deals that show the best things they have to offer. From laptops and computers, to smart tablets, to PC gaming, Best Buy is pumping out the lowest prices I have ever seen. For example, you can save up to $100 on the cheapest Samsung tablets. If you're looking to start digital art and you don't want to spend a lot of money on a new computer and tablet, you can look to buy the Samsung Galaxy Tabs, which is as low as $180. That's literally insane. But let's say you do want a new computer. You can be willing to spend as low as $400 on a tanky Windows computer that fulfills all of your needs. These computers have amazing hardware along with a lot of storage for all your drawings. If you have the Best Buy's Total Tech membership, you can get even more exclusive offers that include stuff like uh, security systems, e-bikes, and appliances. I especially love the Google Nest devices because it's easy to control my lights, computer, and TV with just my voice using the Google Nest. If you find any products you like online at a cheaper cost, Best Buy will immediately match that price to offer you a better service. So basically, if a company is offering you $50 for a Google Nest and Best Buy is offering $60, if you tell Best Buy that this company is offering you $50, they will immediately match that price. This way, you can get the amazing deals other competitors might have, but with the amazing service that Best Buy provides. What is that service, you might ask? Well, Best Buy offers fast fulfillment options with their in-store pickup and fast delivery options. In-store pickup is really useful when you're not looking to browse Best Buy and you immediately just want to buy what you're looking for. If you don't want that and you just want your stuff delivered to your house, Best Buy can offer as fast as same-day delivery to most products. So the next time you're thinking about buying an electronic or an appliance, save yourself the time and trouble and check out Best Buy. Now, I want to make this clear. This is not a proportion video. This is not a how to draw a human body video. This is not how to draw a 3D shapes video. This is a video that will help you learn the importance of guidelines and how to properly utilize them. I'm going to assume that you can already do everything I've listed. So guidelines are the blueprints of art, okay? Imagine building a skyscraper without a blueprint of the building. By the time you finish that first floor, that, that thing is already gonna collapse, all right? So needless to say, you need to draw guidelines that will guide you through your art, and I can tell you now you are drawing them inefficiently. Guidelines are crucial for achieving good form, proportions, and symmetry in your characters. One thing that I should, that you should exercise is being able to draw 3D objects, so like cubes, cones, cylinders, you know, like being able to draw each of those shapes in every single angle is very important. Over time, as I got better with this concept, I found my art to feel much more 3D-ish. A problem I had with my art is that I felt like it felt too flat, too stiff, too boring, you know? But after doing a lot of these exercises, my art feels much more alive and more human. The biggest problem I see with beginners is that, number one, uh, the way you guys draw guidelines are too vague. You need to have much more information in order to guide you through drawing, and I will show you later what information you'll need. And number two, most of the times beginners don't even use the guidelines. They just draw it and proceed to ignore it. I see this in a lot of people who send me speed paints is that they do draw the guidelines. It's just they ignore them and like what was the point of them? So yeah, today I will be teaching how to draw body guidelines, all right? Like full body guidelines. So you get an understanding of how it should work. This concept applies to all things like objects, backgrounds, and whatnot, and I will show examples of that later. Oh, so I'm not going to do specific guidelines like facial guidelines because that would take way too much time. So if you want to see like stuff like facial guidelines, just check out other tutorials for faces. I do have one if you want to check it out. So, you know, it never hurts, uh, never hurts to see. So yeah, let's get right into it. The biggest mistakes I see from beginners are your drawings are too vague. You should be drawing guidelines for each major part of the object you are drawing. Drawing your object from the start will cause you to only estimate where certain parts go. This will make your drawing look uneven, misaligned, and asymmetrical. No line that you draw should go unplanned. So I'm going to show an example of this, okay? 
so I'm going to try and draw this water bottle without like any any guidelines, okay? So let's see. There, oh, there is a cap right here. Um, the water bottle cap. The bottom part of it goes there. Then the water bottle's neck, and then. Uh, the water bottle, uh, the mid part of the water bottle, and then the bumps, I don't know, there's like five of them maybe, the end bump, and then the last bump, and the, wait, there's like one more bump here, and then the bottom part. So as you can see, this water bottle looks very weird, okay? So this water bottle has curves that it shouldn't. This water bottle looks kind of like misproportioned in a way. I feel like this middle part is too short for and too small for how it should be proportioned. Um, it's very misaligned. It's crooked. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to try to do the same thing, but with guidelines instead. So let me break down this water bottle into its simple shapes, okay? So first, this water bottle is pretty much a cylinder. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a rectangle and I just wanna make a circle based on like how, like the, cur like the curvature of what I think the water bottle should be. Um, and then I'm gonna draw another circle up here just so I can get like the round part of this top part down. And then I'm going to create another rectangle for the cap. And then another ellipse just to tell me what the curvature of the top ellipse looks like. So I, basically I'm just breaking down the simple shapes of this water bottle. I'm going to make sure everything is aligned. It is at this stage, it is very easy to align stuff since everything is just a simple shape. I don't have to go back and edit very fine details and fuck everything up. So let me draw my bottle now. Okay, so now let's compare all three of these. So as you can see, this water bottle is clearly misaligned. While this water bottle may a little may be a little crooked, it's because I drew it kind of fast. But as you can see, it's clearly more aligned than this one is. This one, this one just feels a lot more straight than this one does. Uh, this one also feels more like a rectangle than this one does. This one has like a bunch of curves in it for some reason. While I used the lines of the guideline below it to help me straighten out and um, keep the water bottle even, like in terms of its sides. See, as it, it takes more of like a, a rectangle shape on its sides than just like a an hourglass or something, I don't know. Um, and then I used these cylinders, uh, these circles at the top and bottom, this one and this one, to help keep the 3D form of the cylinder that the bottle is shaped as. So, let me hide this. So as you can see, the the curvature over here, over here, over here, over here, and even at the water um, the water cap, it's all following these two circles that I made. And then this circle here just is just supposed to represent the curviness of this part right here. So this is what I mean by guidelines help you very much with achieving uh, better alignment and proportions. Uh, without the sh uh, without doing just simple shapes just to help you out just to help you uh, your drawing is gonna look very crooked and it's gonna look a lot worse another mistake I see from beginners is you skip stages in your art you should try to avoid completing one part of your drawing without planning the other parts of your drawing because this will cause awkward interactions with many elements of your art which will probably be noticeable
So let's take an example of one of my old drawings, okay? This drawing was created with a lack of planning. I've probably said this before, I don't remember when. Um, but you can clearly see that I have clearly drawn the head and then the hair, and then the body and then the thighs, and I kind of just saved the hands for last. And because I did this, there's a very awkward interaction with her arms and her body, where her arms are just in a very weird position that... I don't know. You can probably see this is a very weird position for her to take. And this was because I plan or I drew the head and the body before I ended up finishing the arms just because I really wanted to, you know, color right away. But please listen to me when I say this, that if you skip stages in your art, it's going to be there's going to be a lot of consequences to this. Another reason this is bad is because fixing more detailed stuff later on will feel more tedious because you will probably screw up any fine detail that you added in your drawing. So let's say I didn't have like a guideline for this art and now I want to shrink the head because I feel like the head is too big. Well, it's already kind of too late because I already finished the head. If I try to change the, um, if I try to change the size of the head, there's going to be a lot of detail I'm cutting off. So I already colored the hair, but now I have to reline it, recolor it because I had to shrink the head, which caused the line of like, which caused this part of the hair and this part of the hair to misalign and I gotta fix all that. And this is just gonna take a long time to fix. And this is gonna cause your drawing session to drag on. I found this to be the leading cause in my demotivation when I draw. So please plan your drawings first and make sure you like its composition, that the anatomy is fine and that everything is aligned before, before moving on to any other stages. And the last thing is that many people just don't draw guidelines in general. I need it to, like, there's this like, huge myth in beginners that drawing guidelines means you're bad at art okay drawing guidelines doesn't make you bad at art if anything drawing useful guidelines displays how well you understand fundamentals i can literally tell whether a person is a beginner or an expert at art solely on how they create their guidelines so you need to get over this false notion or whatever the word is that guidelines too many guidelines is a bad thing all right the more you plan out your drawing the better the result will be and the more cohesive it'll feel so do you remember that water bottle example i showed earlier how do we convert that to a larger scale so like a 3d human well let's see this is a sketch of one of my characters but believe it or not this is not the first sketch i've done of them i did two more previous sketches before i got to this point all right these two are the sketches this one and this one. So what are the purpose of these sketches? Well, I'm going to tell you now. This is the first sketch I always do for every one of my characters. They always follow this sort of like simplistic uh, human, uh, human form. This sketch should tell me, number one, the anatomy of my character. So you guys, have you seen my anatomy video? Um, I do... I always make sure that the head is equal to the upper torso, lower torso, that this all equals a leg. That All of that is what I check in this first sketch right here, okay? So this is always the stage where you want to check like your proportion anatomy, your proportions of your character. The second thing you want to make sure you like in this drawing is the posing of your character. So as you can see, my character is supposed to look very sassy. Uh, I use a lot of line of actions in this drawing. So as you can see, like this leg right here is like curved instead of just being two lines. I like to use curves for my limbs to make them feel more fluid. If you want to see my post tutorial, I also go over how to make more interesting poses. So in this sketch, you need to absolutely make sure that you're fine with your proportions and that you're fine with your posing. Because in later sketches, this will be very hard to fix and it will take a lot of time. Also, you should notice how I don't use like complicated shapes, all right? So the head is basically just a circle with the cheekbones. The cheekbones aren't very, aren't very detailed. I also do a line to show where I want my character to be, um, where I want my character to be looking. Uh, the neck is literally just a line. The upper torso is just this rectangle and then the shoulders are just two circles the same goes for all the joints they're just circles the feet are triangles they're, they're this like 3d cone shape so i can tell where the feet are pointing so i can tell that the feet is pointing that way and this foot is pointing that way so once again 
The sketch doesn't have to be that detailed. You can see that I can basically express my character's proportions and posing just with these simple shapes. Getting really good at being able to do these guidelines should make your drawing process a lot easier and faster. So after this, what do we do? Well, then we move on to our second sketch. And this is exactly the second sketch. So what the sec second sketch should tell me are number one, the shapes of my character, and number two, the wireframes of my character. So let's go over shapes first. So do you remember from the water bottle example that I was making sure that the bumps, I had like the bumps of the water bottle? That's kind of what I mean by shapes. So in the human example, uh, the shapes I want to like plan out are like shapes of the thigh, shapes of the lower thigh, shapes of, you know, the arms, the shoulders, the chest, and the face. So when I'm like planning this out, I'm going to draw directly over my guideline and I'm going to plan these shapes out. So like for the arm, let's say I want the arm to be like that. And then I want that to go into my lower arm and my lower arm is going to be shaped like this. So those are the types of shapes I'm talking about. Shapes that build your character, build their anatomy. So like, let's say you had the bones of the character. This is the meat of your character. So then, for example, their thighs, their the back of their legs, uh, etc. You know. So that is the shape of my character. Their body parts, the shape of their body parts. So yeah. The wireframe of my character is, imagine you had, uh, you know, if you're into 3D modeling, imagine your character and then they had all these lines that showed their 3D form. That are That is what wireframing is supposed to show you. So look at this example. Um, I have a lot of lines that tell me the center of my body part and the curvature of my body part. So as you can see over here, this is the center of my head, center of my neck, center of my upper torso, lower torso, center of my legs, and then this should be the center of this leg. Uh, yeah, this wireframing is supposed to help you a lot with placing objects on your character. So things such as clothing, scars, let's say tattoos on your character. So you need to make sure that those things are conforming nice to your character because if you don't have like these curvature lines, it's going to be very hard to draw, you know, stuff that looks like it's not a PNG just slapped on your character. So what I mean by that is like, you need to make sure that your shapes or your shirts don't look like this because that just looks like a PNG slapped onto your character. These lines... When you pay attention to the curvature of these lines, these lines help you figure out a lot of your character's form and what their form er, and what the clothing on top of that form will look like. So as you can see here, this curvature, uh, the curvature of the shirt on the bottom is following the curvature of these lines that I previously drew. So it's going to be a lot easier to figure out the angle of objects that I put on my character. And I don't have to figure this out at later stages because if I just had a shape like this, so like that, how am I supposed to figure out the curvature of that shape? I can't unless I have a wireframe on it. So that is the very, that's the importance of wireframes on your character or your guidelines. It doesn't just have to be a human. So yeah, once again, this stage of your sketch should tell you the shapes of your characters and the wireframing of your character. And last but not least is the third sketch, which should simply just tell you the details of your character. As you can see, I didn't really do much, but kind of just trace most of the things. The only details that I am referring to are stuff like clothing, her hair, her accessories, the way her eyes are going to look like, and her little markings. So once again, you should only go on to the next stage once you're super happy with how your sketch looks. So I was happy with how this looked. It's a perfect representation of the pose that I want and the anatomy or the proportions look fine or they look good. 
Then I moved on to uh, my second sketch and I drew directly over it using the bottom as a reference. If you're going to draw guidelines, you need to make sure that you're using them. So I use these circles as reference for how bulgy my shoulders are going to be. I use the lines for the curvature of my arm. Uh, same with the curvature on my legs. I use these lines. Um, I use the circles for references to where my joints should be. So as you can see, my elbows are always like where the circles are. And then, yeah. And then I made sure to include the shapes of what my character has. So as you can see, like uh, the leg, you know, you already know how humans look like. I don't have to explain that any further. And then I added wireframing to my character to show their form, show how 3D they should look and how the curvature of or the perspective of each of the body parts look like. And then on top of that, I drew my final sketch, which just is just the final details of my character. So her gloves, her socks, uh, her little back things. I don't know what to call these. Her hair, her eyes, and etc. So each of those sh uh, sketches led me to this perfect representation of my character. I got my expressions across. So like the posing, she looks sassy. That's what I wanted. Her proportions are right. Her sh She feels like 3D-ish which is the purpose of the shapes and the wireframe, and then, yeah. So let's move on to a more advanced example. This example is going to include perspective. So as you can see, I have my character here. Uh, she's supposed to be sitting on a chair. Uh, I have not drawn the chair yet, so I'm going to include the sketching of the background. Um, so as you can see, these are the guidelines for my chair. And then I put my chair, my character onto there. So how did I draw my character like this? Well, of course I didn't just start out drawing my character like this. Uh, so let me actually hide all this detail and get the basic sketch shown. So there's the basic sketch. And of course I did not even start at this basis, basic sketch. I have a previous sketch and then I have my first sketch, which these layers are super unorganized. So my first sketch does my first sketch isn't really that good. So as you can probably tell, that made going on from two other sketches a lot harder than it should have. But just learn from that mistake that I made, okay? This first first sketch is not good. What this first sketch should have included is a lot of shapes like this one. So as you can tell, uh this shows the posing of my character correctly. As you can see, I wanted my character to sit on this chair. Let me lower the opacity of the chair and increase the opacity of my character so you can see it better. Oh, that's the max opacity. Anyways, I basically drew an outline of how I wanted my character to sit on the chair. Um, so yeah. And then the second thing I should have done correctly or better is show the anatomy of my character. A tip I'm going to give you is that when you're doing perspective, it's really, really easy when you just divide everything into shapes and stack it on each other. So if you're, of course, if you're doing like, if you're not drawing any guidelines and you're just drawing a character doing like a pointing pose, it's going to be very hard to, you know, do that because then your anatomy will be wrong and maybe it won't even look like they're pointing forward. So when you're doing this first sketch, if you want to do perspective, Break down your character into like simple shapes first. So like, uh, so like as you can see, you see my diamond there. So let's draw that in a perspective to where like the character is standing like that. And then they're standing like this. So break down your character into shapes. So once again, I'm going to draw a circle for my head. So that, that's going to be my character, and that's the way they're looking. That is the shape of my head. Now, let's draw the my upper torso. So I'm going to draw this shape, but imagine it in a 3D way that it was pointing the same direction as my head. And this is what I mean by it's very important to understand, or it's very important to learn how to draw 3D shapes. So this is the top of this body part. And this is the 3D representation of that body part. 
And then my lower torso, once again, this is the top of that shape. And then this is going to be the behind of that shape. So as you can see, three simple shapes, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a crazy thing. And I'm going to stack these shapes on top of each other. Make sure they align. Like I'm connecting a Lego set. And as you can see, this makes perspective a lot easier because instead of having to just draw your character's body parts individually and struggling really hard on like perspective and if everything's aligned, if you break everything into simplistic shapes, it will be way easier to align those body parts even easier. So let's go back to this example. That's what I should have done with this drawing. Unfortunately, I didn't, so it made the whole process a lot uh, harder. So... This wrist sketch, once again, told me the anatomy or the proportions of my character and the pose my character is doing. After that, I did my second sketch. So the second sketch told me the shapes of my character and the wireframe of my character. As you can tell, uh, I have a lot of lines, probably more than I needed on my character. Uh, this is basically wireframing to help me line up all the clothing that I needed on my character. So all these simple lines, all these lines. The middle of my face and yeah and then this also told me the shapes of my character so as you can see i have my leg shape right here uh, my thigh shape is right here as you can see the arm shape is right here along with the wire framing and then the back shape is like that and then the boob shape of course is outlined in blue so it is very important on the second sketch to do your wireframing and to get the shapes of your character because this will make it a lot easier for your third sketch which will be probably your final sketch you can do more sketches if you need to which will include your actual character so let me uh raise the opacity on this i don't know where that layer is i don't know what the rest of these layers are so as you can see uh, let's go back to my wireframe. Uh, I drew this clothing directly over her arm, following these lines right here, and making sure that the clothes also follow that uh, that curvature of her body. As you can see, her face also follows the curvature of her head. Uh, since her head is tilted this way, her eyes will also be like tilted this way. Uh, this is the middle of her head, so of course... Uh, this is going to be the middle of her eyes. The, her her torso is connected like this. So this is where her belt is going to be. As you can see, I have a belt right here. And it's going to be wrapped around this part of her. Because let me see uh, if I can see it. Uh, you can see that I have a little bit of curvature right here. Depicting where her upper torso and lower torso are connected. And yeah, that is the third sketch. And then that led to my line art, which led to the coloring. And as you can see, a lot of her proportions look fine and right. So it is very important that I nail those three sketches to nail the proportions of this character. Because imagine I was at the line art stage and then I'm like, damn, her head is too big. So now I'm going to mess up what detail I had. So imagine I shrunk it, just an example. Now I ru ruined the perfectness of my line art. The Like some of the line art width doesn't even follow the rest of the line art width anymore. And there's just a lot of disconnected stuff and it just looks really bad. So always be sure to correct your errors in your sketches before you move on to the final stuff or else it'll be harder to fix everything. So I want to show you one more example that highlights how guidelines can make your art feel more 3D-ish. So take a look at this drawing and think about the guidelines I used for it. So now that you're done thinking, a lot of the guide- uh, I don't actually have the original guidelines, but I have something that kind of looks like it. A lot of the guidelines I created for this image were just a bunch of simple 3D shapes. So here's the guideline that I started, which is the floor. It's just like a- just like a mapping of the floor. Uh, the second guideline I used was this. So notice how I have just a bunch of 3D shapes with a lot of like 
wireframing that shows in like how and what direction they're curved in. So as you can see this upper torso, um, the upper torso is angled like this. So as you can see, this 3D shape is supposed to follow the um, the perspective of the floor. As you can see, the lower 2D or the lower torso shape is shaped like this. And since the character is supposed to be bending forward, this um, this part is going to look much more up than this one is. This one's looking down. This one's looking up. So then it creates like a bending motion. And then this head, the head is looking in the same direction as the floor as well. So all of these wireframing is derived from the floor perspective. And then directly from the wireframing of the first sketch, I draw these guidelines for the dress and her hair because her hair is like flat. So I want to make sure that it's even with the direction of her face. And these blue guidelines helped me with the creation of her dress and her uh, bangs. And as you can see that because of these guidelines, everything flows a lot nicely with each other and it feels like a lot more 3D-ish. So including a bunch of like 3D shapes in your guidelines can make your art feel like have much more perspective into it. So if you ever feel like your art is just too flat, too boring, then instead of just using like 2D dimensional shapes, so like this, just take it a little bit a step further and just transform those shapes into 3D shapes and just stack them on top of each other. And in that way, you'll be able to create much more interesting and dynamic art where all the parts are just 3D. And that's all I have to teach today. I really hope this tutorial showed you the importance of guidelines and how like much more expressive they can make your art. Um, after this tutorial, I want you to try an exercise where you try to replicate this drawing uh, from the guidelines to the final sketch. So try to draw more like 3D things to like improve your skills at drawing directly on guidelines. And yeah, be sure to subscribe, like, share this video with someone if you found it useful. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.